All right, Shalom. I'm going to begin this lesson by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha, Raka, Kodash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father's beloved Son and the Holy Spirit. Also, I'd like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much do honors and respect to the sense brethren out there is also laboring in his work, and as always, when to say shalom to the believers, you know the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So yeah, just wanted to go into another quick lesson, which in this sitting right here, I wanted to somewhat expound on the benefits of this entrance that has been ministered unto us meaning being granted access to this truth, and most importantly, being given the ability to retain this information, which serves as the bridge, if you will, to our salvation. And in understanding this, this should give us more and more incentive to constantly thank Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah, seeing that there's plenty of men who desire this knowledge. Yet, when presented with it, they wasn't able to fully grasp it, to retain it, to hold fast to it, which makes this truth even the more precious, seeing that it's not as easily accessed as one might think. In fact, this truth can be considered somewhat elusive. Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick before we get into this lesson. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, the sixth chapter. And the 35th verse, it reads, Be willing to hear every godly discourse, and let not the parables of understanding escape thee, which these parables of understanding translates to the very doctrine that we present before you. Well, according to what we read in here, the scriptures encourages us to let not the parables of understanding escape, <laughs> escape thee, which when you go into this word escape, one of the definitions there is to slip away. Proving that this truth is elusive, and again, this is what makes this truth precious. Matter of fact, let's go there. This is the book of First Samuel, the third chapter. And the first verse, it reads, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. So what we read in here is pretty much the scriptures outline and the fact that just like now, then this word would not always be readily available. And again, this is what makes it precious. For an example, when you read the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, it actually refers to this word as rain. Why? Well, when you consider the rain, it doesn't descend upon the planet Earth 24-7, all day, every day, 365 a year. No, it rains in spurts. But once the rain descends upon the planet Earth, it breathes life. It benefits the flowers, the trees, the soil, the herbs. But if there's a drought, if the rain is taken away, then death follows. The same flowers and trees and herbs begin to wither. Well, this also applies to this truth. As long as the truth is readily available, and on display, then there is hope. But as soon as the truth is taken away, then death will surely follow. Matter of fact, let's prove that real quick and we're going to go back. This is the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter, and the 18th verse. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish, 
but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish, which this vision right here translates to the testimony of our Lord Yahweh. So as long as this truth is on display and we are granted access to it, and most importantly, able to retain it, well, in that event, there is hope. But as soon as the truth is taken away, the people perish. Once again, giving credence to the idea of this word being compared to rain. Again, once the rain descends upon the planet Earth, it breathes life. But as soon as the rain is taken away, let's say there's a drought. Well, death ensues. The people perish. See that? So that's the same effect that the word has. All right? So when you go back here again to the book of 1 Samuel, the third chapter, and again, the first verse, it reads, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. See, there was no open vision, which again, that open vision translates to the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah, being the spirit of prophecy, the ability to foresee. Now, real quick, let's click on this word precious. Yeah, and the Hebrew word here would be yaquan, and it reads valuable, prized, weighty, precious, rare, rare, splendid, which whenever you have something that's considered rare, this by default would make it precious. For an example, gold. Gold is highly sought out because it's precious. It's rare. See? Well, this applies to this word. And what contributes to this word being valuable, prized, weighty, precious, and ultimately rare? Well, the fact that it breeds immortality. Possessing this truth serves as the bridge to everlasting life. And guess who knows this? Esau, the so-called white man. This is why this man has exhausted a lot of time, money, energy, and resources into blocking Israel from coming into this information. Why? Because ultimately, this serves as the decree, the paperwork, if you will, that will cement our dominion over the nations. See that? So the so-called white man was set up pretty much to block you from this truth. All of this man's efforts from his laws and legislations down to his trends was set up to keep Israel in further derision. Which brings me to this lesson, which is centered around a parable that our Lord Yahweh Shah spoke right here in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. And starting at the third verse, it reads, And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, what we read in here is the parable concerning the sower, which sowed seed in different forms of ground, which the scriptures refer to as the wayside, the thorny grounds, the stony ground, and the good ground which those grounds are all metaphors for the mindset of the people. So whenever this word descends upon good ground, then the good ground or that good mind, that good heart is built to receive the seed, or in this case, the word, versus that seed descending upon stony ground or thorny ground, or in this case, the wayside. And that's where we're going to pick it up at, right here in the fourth verse. It says, And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And again, this wayside represents a certain mindset. See? 
a certain state of mind again. And when he sold some seeds, which represents this word, fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, and when he sold some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, these fowls right here represents Esau, which the scriptures refer to as the eagle. So you have certain spirits out here that's not willing to yield to this form of teaching because deep down they subscribe to what the so-called white man has packaged and presented unto them. This foul right here. See that? Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick and we're going to go back. Right here in the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And beginning at the third verse. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, <laughs> in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. Yeah, let's read this again. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is here to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, and who would the God of this world be? None other than Esau, the so-called white man himself. See? It says, in whom the God or the power of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So for you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans out there who believe not the report, well, this goes back to the God of this world which again applies to Esau, blinding your mind. So deep down inside, you show reverence to whatever the so-called white man has taught you, and this is what contributes to our people not being willing to yield or fully commit to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Why? Because the God or the power of this world have blinded your minds, have distorted your vision, have clouded your vision and alter your reasoning by way of his legislations, his laws, his media, his rhetoric overall, right? Even down to the trends that's on display here under this current B system. Well, it all contributes to you being blinded, see? And not being willing to receive the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, Yahweh and essentially, this is what our Lord Yahweh Shah is saying right here. When you go back to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, and again, the fourth verse. And when he sold some seeds, fell by the wayside, which again, the wayside represents a certain mind state. And the fowls, see, and the fowls came and devoured them up. So this word, would never take root, you know, in the minds of those of you who subscribe to the rhetoric of the so-called white man. So essentially, when you hear this word, the fowls devour it up. Or in other words, Esau, that fowl represents the so-called white man, the eagle. Now, this could be further proven when you stroll down in this same chapter here, Matthew, the 13th chapter. Why our Lord Yahweh Shah pretty much explains the parable. And we're going to pick it up right here in the 18th verse. It reads, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, <laughs> then cometh the wicked one, which the wicked one would be none other than Esau. And that's pursuant to the book of Malachi, the first chapter around the fourth verse. It says, Then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So the wayside, which again represents a certain state of mind, right? Well, when that seed, which represents the word, falls upon those who would be considered the wayside, right? Or a certain mind state 
amongst you Israelites, well, the wicked one <laughs> snatcheth it away, which gives credence to the idea of the so-called white man's rhetoric being the very entity that distorts your vision. Whatever the so-called white man packaged and presented to you was an effort to block you from this truth. See, again, it says, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside, which when we read in the fourth verse, the scriptures say that the fowls of the air took away the old seeds from the wayside. Well, right here, where the Lord is explaining the parable, those fowls are referred to as the wicked one, which for those of us in the know, understand that this would translate to Esau, the so-called white man. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Lord willing, it was out of fine. Till the next time I say, Shalom.